Hello, welcome to the Roy Rogers News Channel. Thank you so much for watching. All right, today we're going to dive into the competitive analysis series where I talk about a Pokemon and the variants you can use with that Pokemon. And before I dive into the competitive analysis series, I would like to thank Moxie Mozzie, Roadie Walk, and the Mega Bladers for their kind wishes for the series. And I would also like to thank my script proofreader, Aran for reading today's script and making the necessary modifications. And the qualifications for a proofreader is that they need to have a seasoned record in the competitive scene. And the reason for this is that way I can ensure quality here on the Roy Rogers News Channel because Roy Rogers News really prioritizes on the quality of the content. And Without further ado, let's go ahead and dive into the competitive analysis for Gengar right now. So let's go ahead and pop up the big computer and let's take a look at Gengar's specifications. Tier 4 Gengar is OU. Gengar's typing is Ghost and Poison. Its resistances are Poison, Bug, and Grass. And its weaknesses are Ground, Ghost, Psychic, and Dark and it has two immunities, normal and fighting. There are certain exceptions for this rule here. If the opponent has the ability Scrappy, or if you are holding the ring target. Now, let me emphasize this. Kangaskhan is hardly used in OU, and this only really applies if we're talking about Miss Magius and Enyu, because the double edge will hit on Miss Magius because Kangaskhan has the Scrappy ability. I should also note that Ring Target is a rare item, so you don't need to worry about Ring Target. Oh yeah, and going back to Kangaskhan, Conkeldor and Infernape might give Kangaskhan a very harsh taste of reality, the fact that Kangaskhan can't survive an OU. So don't worry about singing Kangaskhan an OU. It probably won't happen. Alright. And... There's actually another exception here. If the Pokemon is running the move Foresight, then the normal and fighting type moves will hit. Oh yeah, I almost forgot to say that if fighting type moves can hit, then Gengar is resistant to it since it is also part poison. But let me make this note here. There are very few Pokemon with the move Foresight, so you don't need to worry about it. And actually, I don't think there's any Pokemon in the competitive scene in PvP that run Foresight as of the time of this taping that I'm really aware of. So you don't need to worry about any Pokemon with the move Foresight. Alright, now let's go ahead and dive into the ability. The ability is Curse Body, so this ability may disable a move used on this Pokemon. Alright, it's kind of like a built-in disable for Gengar, and it triggers randomly. All right. Now let's go ahead and dive into the base stats. So, before I read these stats, let me emphasize something. Gengar is an excellent glass cannon, and I would not suggest it for any serious walling or any sort of match that you need a physical or special wall. That's not Gengar's role. Gengar's role is to be an effective glass cannon. And let's go ahead and read the stats here. So. Base HP is 60, base attack is 65, base defense is 60, base special attack is 130, base special defense is 75, and base speed is 110. Now, 110 speed is pretty good. You can outspeed things like Chandelure and Hydreigon, assuming that they're not running Choice Scarf. But you need to be careful of Jolteon, Starmie, and Aerodactyl, because they have higher speed stats and they will kill you if they have the necessary move pools to do so. I'm thinking about Psychic Starmie, I'm thinking about Shadow Ball with Jolteon, and also Jolteon holding the choice specs, and I'm thinking of Aerodactyl with its base speed much higher than Gengar's. Because Gengar's base speed is 110, and Aerodactyl's base speed is 130 so be careful when you deal with Jolteon, Starmie, and Aerodactyl. But I can get to how to deal with Starmie in a moment but let's go ahead and dive into 
the move pools right now. Oh yeah, I should also note that the golden rule for playing competitive is that you want your speed IV 31. Gengar really benefits from this rule. So I'm going to throw that out there right now. All right, so let's go ahead and dive into the move pools. And I'm going to break this down between the most often and the least often. So let's go ahead and speak about a set that we see often. So the classical nasty plot variant. So the IVs on this variant are HP 25 plus, attack doesn't really matter, defense plus 25, special attack 31, special defense plus 25, and speed is 31. EVs are 6 HP, 252 special attack, and 252 speed. Nature is timid, so plus speed minus attack. And the moves are Nasty Plot, Shadow Ball, Focus Blast, and then for the fourth move, you can pick either Thunderbolt, Psychic, Energy Ball, Sludge Wave, or Hidden Power Fire, or Ice. And the item you should have Dengar holding is either a Black Sludge or a Life Orb. Now, let me explain the significance of each of the moves that I mentioned here. And I may have you come back to this point in the video because I would like to read the sets without having to explain the moves a lot. So I'm going to explain the moves right here while well, I can. So Nasty Plot is pretty much a special attacking equivalent of Sword Stance, except you're boosting the special attack by plus two, and that's pretty good. And if you boost it enough, then you could be able to hit Blissey with your Focus Blast, which could hurt a lot. All right. And then you have Shadow Ball. Shadow Ball is good for things like Cloister, because Cloister has a frail special defense stat. Gengar, implying that you beat the speed tie. Starmie, but Starmie, how do you handle a Starmie? You have to predict when Starmie is going to come in. You have to predict the Starmie, and once you predict the Starmie, then you can use Shadow Ball and you can knock out Starmie, and... You can go home with a smile on your face the moment that you knock out Starmie. Cough Egregious! There you go. If you're running a Conkeldor alongside with Gengar, I would say that this is a good way to knock out Cough Egregious, because Cough Egregious is a direct... I would say it's a direct counter to Conkeldor because it turns Conkeldor's Guts ability into a Mummy ability, and that is a pretty bad inconvenience for... Conkeldor users. So if you're using a Conkeldor, maybe you should try to figure out how to fit a Gengar in your team so that way you can be able to knock out Cough Egregious. Then you have Reuniclus. You can knock out Reuniclus with your Shadow Ball. Then you have Jellison and Chandelure. But let me note this. Chandelure could carry Choice Scarf, so make sure to scout Chandelure before attempting to knock it out. All right, and then we have Focus Blast. Focus Blast is good for threats like Chansey or Blissey. Now, as a caveat here, before you use Focus Blast on Chansey or Blissey, make sure to have at least a few nasty plot boosts, so that way you can be able to have your Focus Blast hit a little harder. Although, I've seen in a match, I would say a few months ago, I've seen some Blissey variants run Calm Mind just to check Nasty Plot Gengars, but Calm Mind and Blissey is, is not really something we see too often, so you don't need to worry about it too much. And then you have Tyranitar, but you need to watch out for Chapelberry, and also you need to watch out for Choice Scarf. Those two variants of Tyranitar are very deadly for Gengar, and it could easily knock out Gengar. And Lucario, I would say Focus Blast is good because Lucario is part skill type and you can easily hit it with that Focus Blast. And then we have Magnezone. Focus Blast is good for that as well. Excadrill, same thing. Pretty good Focus Blast. Implying that you're not in sand. You should be faster than Excadrill and you should be able to knock it out. And then you have Ferrothorn, which Focus Blast is good against as well. I've seen a lot of Gengar variants knock out Ferrothorn with Focus Blast. But with Ferrothorn, you do need to watch out for Gyro Ball, because Gyro Ball has a high chance of killing you since you're a pretty fast Pokemon, and Ferrothorn is a pretty slow Pokemon, 
and the contrast is going to translate into the amount of power the gyro ball has. Not to mention the fact that Ferrothorn is also part steel, so you're also getting a stab bonus as well if you use gyro ball. So Gengar is at risk of being knocked out if you're not careful with Ferrothorn. But if you're willing to take the risk, it might be worth it in the end. All right. And Focus Blast is also good for things like Hydreigon. And you as a Gengar, you're able to outspeed Hydreigon because Hydreigon's base speed is 98 compared to Gengar, which is 110, as I mentioned before. And Focus Blast is good against Hydreigon. The only main variant that you may be concerned about is the Choice Scarf variant. And you should scout for that prior to attempting to knock out Hydreigon, so that way you can have your Gengar live as long as possible. All right, and now we're gonna get to the fourth move, the optionary move that we have in the classic Nasty Plot variant. But I may mention these moves later in other variants, so you may wanna go back to this point where I discuss Thunderbolt at great length and the other moves that I have listed here. So Thunderbolt is good for things like Tentacruel, Gyarados, Coppletops, implying that you predict Coppletops coming in on the switch. Skymery, Pelipper, Milotic, Togekiss, and Mandibuzz. And there are certain Pokemon I didn't mention here, like Starmie or Jellicent, but that's because you can hit them with Shadow Ball. So yeah, that's why I figured it wasn't really worth it to mention them. But Thunderbolt is still a good catch-all move to hit about I would say about a quarter of the meta, uh, a quarter of the OU meta, I would say that Thunderbolt is still a good option for that. And then we have Energy Ball. Energy Ball is good for things like Copple Tops. If you don't have Thunderbolt, Copple Tops can be hit with Energy Ball. It can also be hit with Tyranitar if it's near death. You don't want to hit Tyranitar if it's full health. If it's full health, it's best to opt for Focus Blast or Switch. That's the best case scenario for Tyranitar with full health, but if Tyranitar is near death and if you don't want to miss because Focus Blast has a chance of missing, then you can be able to do Energy Ball and that should be able to handle Tyranitar. Then you have Milotic, which you can do Energy Ball with. Then you have Hippodon, and actually this is a new thing you can handle with Energy Ball. And then Rotom Wash. So, Energy Ball is for the threats that I mentioned. Now, I need for you to keep in mind a few factors. One is Energy Ball doesn't really hit too many threats, but if you're having problems with the Pokemon that I mentioned here, then maybe Energy Ball might be a good option for Gengar. But I figured that Energy Ball was worth mentioning because I've seen some variants of Gengar that have Energy Ball. Not to mention that there might be a few people that carry around something like Gastrodon or Swampert and OU, so you may want to carry around Energy Ball for those particular reasons, but I would say that Energy Ball is good for certain threats, and I would say Energy Ball doesn't really cover as many Pokemon, but it does cover enough of them to have it listed here. Then we have Sludge Wave. Sludge Wave is good for neutral damage on any Pokemon, and it's also good for Breloom and Rotomo, which Rotomo, as of the time of this taping, is pretty common in OU right now. And Breloom is also pretty common in OU, so Breloom being hit with Sludge Wave is pretty much a death sentence for Breloom. And Rotomo does not like your Sludge Waves as well. So Sludge Wave is good against those two Pokemon, and it's good for overall neutral type damage. But just keep in mind that the Steel types are going to be immune to your attacks. I mean, I know that you have Focus Blast in your move pool, but Focus Blast has a chance of missing, and if you want to deal with Skymery, I don't really advise for you to be heavily reliant on Focus Blast. But that's just a personal taste. Maybe you might be more attuned to that risk than I am, but I know but there are a fair amount of people that are willing to take risks in the competitive scene, so I figured that that would be worth mentioning here. And now it's time for us to discuss the Hidden Powers. So we have Hidden Power Ice and Hidden Power Fire. Now, Hidden Powers, at this point, this requires a lot of prediction. A lot more prediction than predicting when Starmie is going to come into the fight. Hidden Power Ice is good against Dragonite, Breloom, 
Salamance, Garchomp, and Gliscor. Now, the reason why I added Breloom here, because Breloom is part grass and it doesn't like hidden power ice too much. But I should also note that Dragonite, there might be some variants of Dragonite that might have a special defense investment, so be careful when you're dealing with Dragonite. But other than that, Salamence and Garchomp should fall to Hidden Power Ice. My score we don't really see it too often in OU anymore, but I figured it was worth mentioning just in case there is an occasion where you see Gliscor, you can deal with it with Hidden Power Ice. So I figured that would be worth mentioning even though we don't see Gliscor in OU too often. Rotom Mo. Alright, and then we have Hidden Power Fire. Hidden Power Fire requires a lot of predictions. Same with Hidden Power Ice. So we have Caesar. Now, Caesar is pretty much a death sentence for Gengar, because Caesar can hit Gengar either by Bullet Punch or by Pursuit, and it just depends on what your opponent thinks you're going to do. If your opponent thinks you're going to switch, he's going to do Pursuit. If your opponent thinks you're going to stay in, he's going to do Bullet Punch. So either way, Caesar is going to knock out Gengar either way, but you have to be able to navigate what your opponent might be thinking about what you're going to do. The reason why I mention this point is because Hidden Power Fire is really good for Caesar if you can predict Caesar arriving into the fight. Same rules as Starmie, if you think that Starmie's going to come in on the switch, do Shadow Ball. If you think Caesar is going to come in on the fight, do Hidden Power Fire if you have Hidden Power Fire. And Skymery, it's also good for Skymery as well, although, as I mentioned before, Thunderbolt is a bit better if you're handling just Skymery because Thunderbolt you can handle I would say a good quarter of the meta compared to Hidden Power Fire which is really exclusive to certain Steel types and a Grass type which is Breloom. Breloom does not like Hidden Power Fire. And then we have Lucario. Lucario doesn't like Hidden Power Fire either. Then we have Magnezone. Magnezone doesn't like Hidden Power Fire. Road of Mo, same thing. Excadrill does not like Hidden Power Fire, and Ferrothorn doesn't like Hidden Power Fire. Ferrothorn and Caesar, you could take full advantage of the fact that they're four times weak to Hidden Power Fire, and you could be able to knock them out that way. Alright, and then we have the last move on the list here. Psychic, at least for this variant. And Psychic is good for threats like Tentacruel, Breloom, Infernape, Kung Keldor, or Mininchal. Now, as a note, Tentacruel can be hit by either Psychic or Thunderbolt, but if you're just targeting Tentacruel, then Thunderbolt is the much better option as it can handle about a quarter of the OU meta. Then you have the other four fighting types here, Breloom, Infernape, Kung Keldor, and Mininchal. So if you're having trouble with one of those four Pokemon, then maybe Psychic might be a good move for you if you're having a fighting type weakness in your team. Alright, so those are the moves here, and then we have another set that's being used often by Gengar users, and I would like to name this the Trick Gar variant. And the IVs here are HP plus 25, attack doesn't really matter, defense plus 25, special attack 31, special defense plus 25, and speed is 31, EVs are 6 HP, 252, special attack 252, speed, its nature is timid, so plus speed minus attack then the moves are trick shadow ball focus blast and then for the fourth move slot either sludge wave hidden power fire or ice energy ball psychic or thunderbolt and since i discussed the other moves i'm going to ask you to go back to the time when i did discuss these moves but the move that i want to talk about is trick and oh yeah at what item trick gar hold is either toy scarf Choice Specs or Black Sludge. If you notice something in Trick Gar, I would like for you to look at the items. And they create a little bit of an inconvenience for your opponent. Now, Black Sludge creates an inconvenience by essentially hurting your opponent every turn, but it's not really as bad of an inconvenience because your opponent can still do the moves that he or she wants to do. The items I would like for you to look at are Choice Scarf and Choice Specs. Those items can create a serious inconvenience for your opponent, and if you execute the moves correctly, then you can shut down Blissey. I mean, 
You can either hit it with Focus Blast, applying it to get enough nasty plots, or you can knock out Blissey this way by essentially switching up the item, or Chansey, which you take away its Eevee Light, and you give it an item that pretty much forces you to do one move only. Be dead on arrival the moment that you switch the items with Trick. So, Choice Scarf or Choice Specs. Although I know a lot of Trick Gars these days like to run Choice Scarf because they like to target walls. Choice Specs is alright for some variants. The only thing you really risk here is the fact that there are some Blissey variants that run Special Attack. Special Attack, so that's the only thing you're risking here. But Choice Scarf is really good because you don't even let Blissey have a Special Attack boost. You just give Blissey an unnecessary speed boost, which Blissey doesn't really need. Blissey needs to emphasize a lot on its walling prowess. And the fact that you take that away and you have Blissey's leftovers, you essentially shut down Blissey or Chansey. You shut down Blissey or Chansey and that is pretty much a death sentence for Blissey or Chansey. All right, now it's time for us to dive into the not so often variant of Gengar. So let's go ahead and discuss the sub disable set. Now, I was kind of hesitating whether or not to add this variant. The reason why I added this set is due to an event that happened to me. When I filmed the first Pokemon Tubers episode with Rody Walk at Empty Birchfield, I remember I mentioned that sub disable Gengar is not really used too often because of its curse body ability now. And then after I got done filming that, Pokemon Tubers episode, I then went on to fight some PvP matches. And then there was a guy, and of course, he had sub disable. Well, the producer Jerry was on the line, and he was laughing like crazy, seeing me essentially befuddled, thinking people rarely run sub disable Gengar. Why would people want to run that? But I guess that one guy showed me that yes, sub disable Gengar is still being used. And when Aaron was proofreading the script, he's like, people don't use that too often. And I told him, I know, but when I fought somebody in PvP, they used it on me, and I don't want to look ridiculous after I'm done taping this, so I'm just gonna mention the sub disable Gengar just to discuss it here. So the IVs on a sub disable Gengar are as follows. HP plus 29, attack doesn't really matter, defense is plus 25, special attack is 31, special defense is 25 plus, and speed is 31. And the EVs are 248 HP, 60 special defense, and 200 speed. Its nature is timid, so plus speed minus attack. And its moves are substitute, disable, so I should note. Disable is an egg move from either Grimer, Muck, Duskull, Dusclops, Dusknor, Yon Mask, or Cofagregis. Battle Ball, Sludge Wave, Thunderbolt, or Focus Blast. The reason why I didn't really specify a third or fourth move is because you can mix them up to your liking. Although the most common variant I see are Shadow Ball and Sludge Wave, although you can run Thunderbolt or Focus Blast for the fourth move, most people would use Shadow Ball as the third move for a sub disable variant of Gengar. And the item that sub disable Gengar holds is Black Sludge. But yeah, in Sub-Disable, Gengar shuts down a lot of, I would say, bulky walls that have one attacking move. Think of something like a Hippodon with Earthquake, or think of something like a Conkeldor without a second move to hit Gengar. So those are the Pokemon that Gengar can have in its targets. And then we have Suicide Gar. Now, the IVs on Suicide Gar are as follows. So, the IVs are HP plus 25, attack doesn't really matter, defense is plus 25, special attack is 31, special defense is plus 25, and speed is 31. EVs are 6 HP, 252 special attack, and 252 speed. Its nature is timid, so plus speed minus attack. And its moves are Nasty Plot. Destiny Bond, which is an egg move from Mistrevious or Mismagius. For the third move, you can do Shadow Ball, and for the fourth move, you can do either Focus Blast, Thunderbolt, Sidekick, Energy Ball, Sludge Wave, or Hidden Power Fire or Ice. And the item you can hold on Destiny Bond Gar is Focus Sash. Alright. And 
what Destiny Bond does is that it is a move that takes your opponent with you if your opponent makes a move that allows for you to faint. So you can be able to knock your opponent out with you, although that is where the focus sash is useful because you get to see if you can outspeed your opponent. If your opponent is faster than you, then maybe you can do a move prior. Or if your opponent is a slower target, then you can be able to do Destiny Bond and then you can take your opponent out and everything's all hunky-dory from there. And then we have two variants that are not used that often, but they're worth mentioning here. We have the physical bulk Gar. Gengar is not really good in its physical bulk, but you could survive one or two more hits implying that you invest in that particular department. So let's go ahead and read what this variant has to offer. So we have the IVs, HP, it's important to have 31 IV because Gengar is not really good at taking hits. It, that's not Gengar's strong point. Attack doesn't really matter. Defense is plus 25. Special attack is 30 plus. Special defense is 25 plus. And speed is 31. And these are 252 HP, 6 defense, and 252 speed. Then you have the nature, which there are two natures listed here. You can either run timid, which is plus speed minus attack, or bold, plus defense minus attack. Aran put in the script here that he would recommend Timid over Bold, so that way you can have the speed advantage over your opponent. There are some variants of this particular Gengar that have the Bold nature. And the moves are Will-O-Wisp, Pain Split, Hex. As a fourth move, you can pick either Focus Blast, Protect, or Thunderbolt. Now, Shadow Ball is a bit repetitive because you already have Hex, which is a Ghost-type attack. All right, and the item that Gengar can hold is a Black Sludge. So, there we go. That's the physical bulk guard. Alright, and now it is time for us to explain the name of the game behind the moves Will-O-Wisp and Hex and Pain Split in tandem. So let's go ahead and do that right now. So Will-O-Wisp will burn your opponent if it lands, which is a status move. Because after you do Will-O-Wisp, then Hex will have a bonus amount of damage, not to mention the fact that Gengar using Hex, you have a stab bonus on top of that. If you're at yellow health, then you can be able to do Pain Split, and you can be able to put your opponent in a bit more of a compromising position, implying that your opponent is near full in his or her HP. And last but certainly not least, and this is a gimmick set, we have Singer Gar which the IVs on that are as follows. HP plus 29, attack doesn't really matter, defense is plus 25, special attack is 31, special defense is 25 plus, and speed is 31. And the EVs are 252 HP, and then we split the defenses. And splitting the defenses is code for 129 defense and special defense. And the nature, you can either run Bold plus defense minus attack, or Calm plus special defense and minus attack. And the moves are Parish Song, Mean Look, Protect, and Shadow Ball. And the item that Singer Gar holds is Black Sludge. And Mean Look is for trapping your opponent so your opponent can't switch in and out. And then Parish Song. I would say pretty nifty tool to have your Gengar there. All right, now it's time for us to close out the computer. All right, there we go. So now, before I close out this segment, I would like to mention two things. The variants of Gengar are really subjective, and it really does depend on what your team wants from Gengar. If one of those Gengar sounds like it can fit your team, then feel free to put in the necessary investments in it. And Aran is the script proofreader, as I mentioned earlier, so you know that these Gengars are top quality have a very high standard for who proofreads these scripts. And the second mention I would like to say is that if you're ever looking for what Pokemon have certain egg moves, 
and maybe you don't have me explaining the egg moves to you on a competitive analysis series, there is actually a source courtesy of Bluebills. Thank you so much for giving me permission for featuring your source. And I can provide a link of it. Now, I know that people are probably wondering what that says, but if you look at the top right, you should see EN. Let's go ahead and check that right now. You see that? The bubble switched at the top. So now there's an English set here, and now this is your English Pokemon here. So just type in the Pokemon you want. Let's just say Gengar, for example. And then you have the egg moves. So you have Disable, you have Haze, and Haze is really good for if you're trying to get rid of Sword Stance boosts or the Dragon Dance boost or whatever boost you want to get rid of. You can get rid of it with Haze and Paris Song here. You have Disable. Let's go ahead and do Disable. And then let's go and go. There you go. And you should have the egg moves here. Oh, hey, all right. So there you go. And there are a few more Pokemon here that you can breed from. This is a prime example of what you can do here. And thank you so much, Blue Nose, for providing that resource to everybody. All right. Thank you so much for watching. This is the Roy Rogers News Channel. Don't forget to comment and subscribe to the channel. Like the content that you see here. And I hope you enjoy the competitive analysis series. And I hope to feature more Pokemon in this series. Don't forget to comment and subscribe to our channel. Like the content that you see here. And this is the Roy Rogers News Channel signing off. Fast, accurate, and biased. Roy Rogers News.